Calvary and those who are out there watching us uh, by stream, uh, this is the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A wonderful God deserves a wonderful praise. No matter what we go through or when we go through it, God is still great. So let us continue to acknowledge and, and be in his presence knowing that God is a wonderful God. Whatever he do is good and even great. That requires living worship. Amen. All right. Psalms 63 says, God, uh, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Amen. I don't know about you. We come to worship and celebrate our God. Amen. Yeah, if you are able to. Please stand for the procession. Come on, put your hands together for the men of Calvary. Test one, two, three. Test it. Lord, 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 Lord. You've been mighty good to me. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. You've been good to me. Lord, Lord. Oh, Lord. You've been mighty good to me. You've been better. Yeah. Better to me. Than I've been. Than I've been. When I was sick and I couldn't get well, have I got a witness? You've been, you've been good to me. When I was sick and I couldn't get well, you've been so good to me. When I was sick and I couldn't get well, you've been, Lord, you've been good to me. You've been better to me than I've been. Hands, clap your hands, everybody. 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 Clap your hands, everyb
Everybody clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Everybody clap your hands. Clap your hands. Everybody clap your hands. You get better. Better than me. Better. Better than me. Better. Come on, y'all. I'm going to ask you a question right here. Have it been good to you? If it been good to you, say yeah. Yeah. I'm going to ask the men of Calvary to just kind of slow down and tell them how good God has been to you. Listen, you've been better to me. Come on. You, you, you been good. You been good. Yes, you have. You've been good. You really, really did. Oh, oh, you've been. You really, really Yeah, you can tell to me. I know you've been so good to me. Better than me. Yeah. Better. Better than me. Better. Better than me. Better. Better than me. You gotta rock with me. You gotta rock with me. Better. Hey. Better than me. Better. You've been good to me. Me up this morning. Better than me. You woke me right on time. Better, 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 yes, you did. And I was closing my right better, mind. You've been better, better to me. me. You've been better. Better than me. Better. Amen. Well, today we would be celebrating uh, Calvary Man's, uh, Man's Week, uh, but with that being said, without further ado, we'll be doing a Calvary Man tribute. So some people may call you a boy, some may call you a young man, while some may even call you an old man. I prefer the term godly man or a man of God. But what does that mean? What does it mean to be a man of God? And how can I start building on these things now? Well, here's seven brief characteristics of Calvary's godly man. The first one, he's, the, he's a devoted, he devotes himself to God. God is always a priority to this godly man. The man looks to God to guide him and direct his every movement. He relies on God to provide him with the understanding of situations. He devotes his time to doing good and to do God's work and to do unto the least of them. They also spend time devoting a rich and intimate relationship with God. Real, God, real man of God loves the Lord. He keeps his heart pure. Oh, those uh, wickedness, uh, temptation. They know also well our ways and our desire for the Lord. A godly man strives to have a pure heart. He strives to avoid lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and pride of life and other temptations, yet works hard to overcome them. Is a godly man a perfect man? Well, not unless he's Jesus. So there are going to be some times a godly man makes mistakes 
fall short, miss the marks, and even sin. Yet he strived to make sure that those mistakes are not being repeated as he displayed a heart of repentance. Thirdly, he keeps his mind sharp. A godly man desired to be wise so that he can make good decisions. He studied his Bible. He works hard to make himself biblically sound and a more uh, disciplined person. He wants to know what is going on in the world so that he can see what he can do for God and others. Uh, this man also uh, learned to, to be resilient in the course of situations. This means that he attends Sunday school, Bible study, that he also is, a, he also is continuing in prayer and worship service. Fourthly, he has integrity. A man of God is one that puts an emphasis on his own integrity. He strives to be honest and just. He works to develop a strong ethic and moral foundation. He has an understanding of godly behavior, and he, and he wants to live the, a life that pleases God. A godly man has a good character and a clean conscience. A, a godly man puts value on, truth, on the truth of God. He doesn't skirt the truth or avoid of, uh, confrontation. He seeks in telling the truth in a loving manner and in a way that God represents God and is also as an honest attestment to who he is. Fifthly, he works hard. In today's world, we often are discouraged from hard work. There seems to be an underlying impriority placed on finding easy ways in, uh, in order to do things. Yet a godly man knows that God wants us to work hard to do our job well. He wants us to be an example to the world that of what we do as hard work and has a biblical implication and has a practical implication. If we start developing these disciplines early and often, it will translation into our college, workplace, and also the kingdom of God. Six, he never gives up. We all feel defeated at times and when we just want to give up. There are times when the enemy comes in and tries to take away God's plan for us and put up barriers and obstacles. A godly man knows the difference between God's plan and his own. He's aware and never gives up on God's plan and to be resilient through this situation also. And he is also encouraged to also know that when his direction and God's direction conflict, that God's, God's plan overrules his plan. Developing determination to keep him going is not an easy level on any task. However, Paul encouraged us not to go worry and well-doing, for we will reap a harvest if we faint not. Lastly, he gives without complaints. Society tells us to always look out for number one. But who is actually number one? Is it God? It should be, and the godly man knows it. When you look out for God, he gives you a heart of giving. When we do God's work he gives a, he, and we give to others, God gives us a heart that soars and in a manner of who he is. It never feels like a burden. A godly man gives his time, talent, and treasures without complaining because he knows that it glorifies God. It's all for the glory of God, and it helps others through that tough time. Dreams can be perceived as perfect items. However, life is not. For our life may be full with tears, cheers, and challenges. Brothers, let's go forward in Christ that we may be the difference in our homes, in the church, in communities, and abroad. May we continue to keep Jesus Christ as our anchor. the last word I see too many victories to let defeat have the
the last word. Sing to me victory. To let defeat have the last word. Sing to me victory. To let defeat have the last word. Well, hear this. When I wake up in the morning Come on, little brother, come on And I realize that I'm That I'm still here Oh, yeah That lets me know That God gave me favor No matter what circumstances reveal yeah. He brought me through My pain and sorrow Reassuring I got hope for tomorrow Defeat can't compete with mercy and grace If I just keep faith, I can win this race Sing to me victory I just can't let defeat have the last word oh, Sing to me victory I just can't let defeat have the When I think of the goodness and all that he's done for me, I dare not complain. He brought me over that rugged hill. All of my heartaches and pain, I understand trials come to make me strong. I got to stay in the race, y'all. I got to keep pressing on. This is my testimony to you. I have victory, even though I don't look like what I've been through. Oh. Too many to let defeat have the last word. Oh, I think too many victories. Too many victories have the last word. Listen. Well, I wake up in the morning, uncounted victory. Yeah. I get out of my bed, uncounted victory. Yeah. I put one foot before the other, uncounted victory. Yeah. I count it all victory. My peace of mind, yeah, uncounted victory. I counted victory, yes, I do. I counted victory. I counted victory, yeah, yeah, I it yeah, yeah, yeah. I it all Look at here. Victory. All of my suffering, yeah, I it victory. Suffering that God's brought me through. I counted victory. I counted victory, yeah, I counted victory. yeah. I it all victory. Every breath. That I take, I count it victory. Every move that I make, I count it victory. I count it victory, y'all. Yeah. I count it victory. Yeah. All of my struggles, yeah. I count it victory. Struggles that I've been through, yeah. I count victory, yeah. Yeah. I count it all victory. Count it victory. Yeah. I count it victory. You know what I mean about victory. I count it victory. Look at here. I called on my Savior, Lord. I count it victory. Yeah. I he gave me, he gave me, he gave me. Ooh, it was victory. Yeah. I count it Jesus gave me victory, yes he did. I counted victory. I called on Jesus, yeah. I yeah. I he gave me. It all I see, I see, I see too many victories to let defeat have the last. Come on, y'all, sing with me. I see too many victories. To let defeat have the last word. Come on.
on Calvary, put your hands together and give the Lord a hand of praise. Come on, give him some crazy praise. Some radical praise. Praise him like he's been good to you. Made a way for you. Open up doors for you. Some of y'all messing with me. But, but, but I know your testimony is just what they sung. You've seen too many victories. And anybody in here, anybody in here gonna help me? Anybody in here gonna help me? Oh, bless his, bless his name. Oh, shucky ducky quack Amen. Thank God for the men of Calvary. Amen. At this time. Good morning, Calvary. We want to thank Reverend Williams for uh, blessing and challenging uh, the men of Calvary. And I pray that as he has uh, spoken to the men, that uh, even those that are listening by way of uh, internet, I pray that you have been blessed as well as challenged uh, by the word that has gone forth. Amen. Well, let us get into the word of God. I want to invite your attention <clears throat> to the 14th chapter of the gospel of St. John, John chapter 14, a very familiar passage of scripture. And I want to look at the first 11 verses, John chapter 14. And I want to look at the first 11 verses. You have your Bibles. Uh, you can turn with us. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And receive you unto myself. That where I am, there may be ye also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffice us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. I want to look at verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. From those words, for a few moments this morning, I want to 
try and talk from the subject, God's cure for heart trouble, God's cure for heart trouble. Let us ask, bow and ask God to bless our time together and our time in study. Our Father and our God, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you. We thank you for being God and being God all by yourself. We thank you that even in the midst of this pandemic and this epidemic, that you have been good, you have been gracious, you have been generous. I pray now that as we prepare now to study your word, I pray, O God, that you would give me power to preach your word so that the hearers would be better. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God's cure for heart trouble. One of my favorite quotes is from Winston Churchill. And I think that this quote applies to these trying times that we're all facing. Winston Churchill, he spoke these words during World War II. And what he said was, when you're going through hell, keep going. And I just believe that that's some great advice. We're all going through as we try to flatten the curve of the coronavirus. And I want to say to us, let's keep going because better days are ahead. And I want to thank all of you for doing your part to keep our community safe. In our text in John chapter 14, I think I need to give you some interpretation and some explanation on John chapter 14. In the Bible, we have four gospel stories about the life of Jesus Christ. They are in the New Testament, and the books are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But the Gospel of John is a little different from that of the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. We call the Gospels Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we call them the synoptic Gospels because they follow a similar timeline. And most of the stories recorded in these Gospels tell us what Jesus said and they tell us what Jesus did while he was in Galilee. But in contrast, most of John's Gospels takes place in Jerusalem. And John organizes his story about the life of Jesus around seven miracles or you could say seven signs that Jesus performed. And then John highlights the seven I am statements of Jesus. And we see the six I am statement of Jesus in this text today. But the most unique thing about the gospel of John is that he adds this 
amazing section that we're looking at today. The setting of our text is the upper room in Jerusalem where they had the last supper. Jesus has gone out to betray Jesus and Jesus will be crucified the next morning. But before Jesus is arrested, John mentions this teaching that Jesus gave his disciples. Some call this section the farewell message of Jesus. Now, now, now we've got to remember that the disciples, they were confused. The disciples, they were afraid. The disciples, they were troubled. And I think right along here, I can use Texas vernacular. Jesus says to the guys, hey guys, don't freak out. Trust God. Trust me. Because we got this. And, and let's be honest, there's a lot of stress in our world right now. And, and, and come on, help me right here. Even before the coronavirus, some of us were already stressed out. And, and the virus has increased our stress level. You could say that we're all stressed up with nowhere to go. Well, let's look at three things that I believe this text teaches us. Number one, I believe this text teaches us that Jesus is at the Father's house preparing a place for us. Jesus is at the Father's house preparing a place for us. We, we know that about 2,000 years ago, Jesus rose from the dead. And he is now alive forevermore. And, and after spending 40 days with his disciples, he caught a taxi cloud and went on back to heaven. And the question is, what has he been doing all this time? That, that's the question. What, what has he been doing all this time? Well, according to our text, he's been preparing a place for us. And in that prepared place for prepared people, we won't have to worry about aging. In that prepared place for prepared people, we won't have to worry about diseases. In that prepared place for prepared people, we won't have to worry about problems. Now, the King James Version of 1611, it says, in my father's house, are many mansions. And this has messed some of us up. We think that we've got a mansion in heaven. But, but what Jesus is really saying is that we've got a room that we will share with all other heavenly family members. Sometimes, non-believers, they, they like to criticize Christians about heaven. They, they say all we care about is the pie in the sky and the sweet by and by. But living the Christian life isn't just about the pie in the sky and the sweet by and by. But God is so good. 
that he every now and then gives us some steak on our plates while we wait. Some say that Christians are so heavenly, heavenly minded until we are no earthly good. But listen, I would be a Christian even if there wasn't a heaven. Because Christians, we know how to love. Christians, we know how to be kind. Christians, we know how to forgive. And if everybody lived like the Bible says we ought to live, our world would be a much better place. I heard a little story about a man on a flight and while on this flight, a storm began to rage. The plane was going up and down. The plane was being twisted and turned. And that was a little girl sit seated on the plane across from the man by herself. And the storm was raging but the little girl was just sitting there singing and reading her little book. When the plane finally landed, they were getting ready to get off the airplane. The man looked over at the little girl and said, how could you be so brave on this plane by yourself in the midst of the storm? The little girl says, I wasn't worried about the storm because my dad is the pilot and I know he was going to get me home safely. Now here's the shout. We don't have to worry about the storms that are raging in our life because if Jesus is your pilot, he's going to get you home safe and sound. But not only do I want to look uh, at my first point, but the second point I want to try and lift is we can be certain about spending eternity in heaven. We can be certain about spending eternity in, in heaven. One of the scary things about now is that there are, or there is, so much uncertainty. I mean, we're all wondering, what if this happens? Will I get the virus? Will someone that I love get the virus? Will there ever be a vaccine for the virus? We're dealing with so much uncertainty and we want some kind of assurance. And, 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 and we can't get the assurance that we want. We can't get it from the government. We can't get it from our president. We can't get it from our governor. But can I tell you, in the midst of such uncertainty, there are some things that we can be certain and sure of. I know two things that you can be certain and sure of. Number one, that God loves us. And secondly, that Jesus died to give us eternal life. And, and we can have that blessed assurance. For well, the Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, he says, I have written these things to you who believe in the name of Jesus, the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal life. When it comes to our salvation, we don't have to have a hope so salvation when it comes to our salvation we don't have to have a think so salvation 
But, but when it comes to our salvation, we ought to have a no soul salvation. There are a whole lot of things you may not know, you may not be sure of, you may not be certain of, but, but if you are a child of God, you can be sure and certain of your salvation. In a very famous passage, Psalms 23, Psalms 23, David sung and wrote about overcoming fear. And when he got to verse 4, he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And then he concludes verse 6 by saying, Surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I think y'all can help me out there. Because the longer I live and the older I get, every now and then I start thinking about family and friends that have crossed over to the other side. And, and, and I don't know about you, but, but I've got more family and friends over there than I've got over here. And in times like these, and, and, and as I think about the all that's going on, sometimes over there starts to look better than over here. Now, now don't, 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 don't mis mistake me. I'm not rushing to get there, but I want you to know I'm ready to go there because I want to see my mother. I, I've got a grandfather over there. And I know I'm not the only one that someone listening to me right now. You may be dealing with the death of a loved one even right now. You've got some family members and friends over there. But most of all, I don't just want to see my mama. <clears throat> I don't just want to see my, my daddy. But I want to see Jesus. Living the Christian life really means this. We can have a fairy tale ending. We can say, and they lived happily ever after. Last thing I believe the text teaches us, and that is that Jesus promised to be our only way to heaven. Jesus promised to be our only way to heaven. In verse 6 of John chapter 14, Jesus makes his sixth of seven I am statements. And every time Jesus stated that I am, he was simply saying that he was God. Y'all Bible readers and Sunday school attenders, y'all remember back in Exodus chapter 3 when Moses asked God, what is his name? And God said, I am. So when Jesus says I am, he is saying I am God. Now, y'all got to check out verses 5 and 6. <clears throat> y'all got to check out verses 5 and 6. Jesus is talking to who I like calling Honest Thomas. Now, now we like calling him Doubting Thomas. But to me, he's really honest. Because Thomas says... I, 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 I must have missed the memo. Thomas says, I didn't get the email 
But Jesus, I want to know where you're going and how can we know the way. And Jesus responded by saying, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And when you look at those words, they tell us who Jesus is, and they tell us what Jesus does. He, he, he says, I'm the way, and without me there is no going. He says, I'm the truth, and without me there is no, no knowing. He says, I am the life, and without me there is no living. He further says that no one can get to the Father except through him. Now, I know some religions say that there are many pathways to God. And that may sound logical. That may sound rational, but Jesus leaves no room for that. Jesus says, I am the only way. And, and y'all got to really look at that. Y'all got to look at that. Jesus, he, he, he didn't say, I'll show you a way. Jesus did not say, uh, I'll show you the way. But Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. Well, I'm done. But when I look at and think about what we're dealing with with this coronavirus, our world has seen wars, our world has dealt with financial crisis. Our world has dealt with diseases in the past. And, and, and the same God that brought us through and brought us out way back then can bring us through and bring us out right now. I know that we're facing a serious crisis, a serious epidemic right now. This is probably one of the greatest crises that we'll ever see in our generation. But maybe we've survived other crises. And, and, and I think I got some witnesses that can help me. Some of us have had some other crises that we've been through. But, but when you think about those past crises, you can shout when I say this. You came out stronger than you were when you went in. And I'm, I'm done, but I just want to close there with the words of Marvin Sapp when he came out of his own personal experience. Marvin Sapp said it like this, I'm stronger, I'm wiser, and God knows I'm better. I, I want to tell you, put your trust, put your confidence, put all of your faith in God. Because he will see you through. Maybe you have been listening to this message. And you may not have a personal, intimate, one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus. This is a great time for you to get to know him on a one-on-one, -on -one personal, intimate basis. Your relatives may know him. Your parents may know him. Your grandparents may know him. But you've got to know him for yourself. 
And the blessing is, you don't have to be in the church house to get to know him. Matter of fact, when you check the biblical record, there are some great believers that done great things for God, but they didn't get to know him in the church house. So right where you are, if you pray this prayer, God, I am a sinner, but I believe that you can Save me. Lord, I ask that you deliver me not only from my sins, but Lord, deliver me from myself so that I can have eternal life so that one day I'll be able to live with you in heaven. My brothers and sisters, if you have prayed that prayer, that prayer of faith and forgiveness. I want you to know that God can save you right where you are. But this is what I want you to do. If you're in the local area of San Antonio, you can call us 210-222-1541 and we can connect you uh, with other resources to help with your Christian journey. Or if you're not in the San Antonio area, connect with the church, amen, that worships and serves God. Because part of being a Christian is to learn about Jesus Christ. That is our prayer and desire for you, amen. Observe the Lord's Supper. I want to share with you uh, some housekeeping things. I want to challenge us to be in continued prayer. Prayer for our city, prayer for our state, prayer for our nation, prayer for our world. For information relative to some of the happenings and going-ons at our church, we welcome you to call the church office. Our church office is still open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 9 to 1, Tuesday and Thursday from 10 to 2, and the phone number 210-222-1541, or you can check out our website, and I want to thank uh, Sister Gail uh, Johnson for keeping our website update and current. This Sunday, our kids will be kicking off with their Sunday school. Many of our young people, uh, they have been uh, reached uh, by Brother Kenny Williams. And uh, not only did he reach out to the kids, but he also reached out to our parents uh, the parents of our kids just to let them know uh, what was taking place on this coming Sunday at 930 via Zoom. Our kids can participate in Sunday school. We are still currently making office calls. If you have not received a call, what will you do this for us? Give us a call. Amen. And, and let us know that You've heard and you've been watching uh, via live stream uh, that we were calling, but you had not received a call and, and you just want to call in to give us uh, current and accurate information. Uh, if you didn't come by last week to receive communion so that we could take it virtually together and we'll do that Soon as I finish with our morning announcements, uh, we welcome you to come by the church from 9 to 11, and we'll have curbside communion. From 9 to 11, we'll have curbside communion. Calvary, next Sunday is Mother's Day, and we will be here from 9 to 11 for mothers that want to come by and pick up 
a small gift, a small token of love from your church. Now, I believe we have about 200 gifts for the mothers, and, and we're going to give them out on the first come, first serve basis. And again, that will be next Sunday, Mother's Day from 9 to 11. Calvary, I want to thank you for your continued support of our church and our ministry by uh, your prayers and your financial giving. Thank those of you that uh, have been giving uh, online, those that have mailed it in, those that, that have dropped uh, it in, uh, dropped by the office and gave. Thank you so very much. That enables us and allows us to continue to do ministry even though we're not able to worship corporately. But I want you to know that ministry is still taking place. I want, matter of fact, let me give a shout out to our praise dance ministry, Sister Doris Wilborn and Sister Linda Jones giving leadership to giving of clothes to uh, CASA. And uh, CASA deals with Children uh, who are doing transition from their home into foster care. And uh, all of you uh, members that bought clothes, it's brand new clothes uh, that will be given to CASA. I want to thank you so very much. Last thing before we observe the Lord's Supper. Let us be in prayer for Brother Anthony Jones, whose sister-in-law passed away on Thursday, Miss Lorraine Jones in Houston, Texas. Certainly let us keep the Jones family lifted up in prayer. Just about a month ago, he lost his father. And then I think last week, he lost a close cousin uh, or two close cousins. And then this week, uh, his sister-in-law. Certainly let us keep them lifted up in prayer. At this time, let us prepare to observe the Lord's Supper. I'm going to ask Reverend Terrell Williams to come. He's going to lead us in our prayer, and then we will come and observe the Lord's Supper. Reverend Williams. Let us pray. Oh, heavenly and gracious Father, we thank you right now for this humble time that we have today. For what you have done for us, Father, have implementation and practification of a spiritual lightning. We thank you right now that you care so much for humanity brokenness that you sent your son down to unite with us. That we may continue to rest in you, that we may continue to reflect in you, that we may continue to worship in you. We pray right now for the hearts and minds that we may continue to rejoice for what you have done for us. And also, Father, we just thank you right now for your blood that will continue to cover us, even in the midst of this corona. We pray right now for the blessing of the people that we receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, on that night in the upper room, Jesus took bread, and after he had broke it and blessed it, he told the disciples, take ye this bread, and eat ye all of it. For this is my body which was broken for you. Likewise with the cup, after he had given thanks, he said, take this cup and drink ye all of it. For in it is the new covenant which is in my blood. Calvary, that concludes our Sunday morning worship. Look forward to uh, joining you again on this coming Wednesday with Wednesday in the Word. I pray uh, that God's choicest blessings would be upon you. Right where you are, every head bowed, every eye closed. And now may the grace of God, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, May it rest, rule, and abide with each of us, henceforth now and forevermore. And everyone under the sound of my voice said amen. Amen.
Calvary One last announcement, and we want you to stay tuned uh, to the church office as well as our website. Next Sunday, we want to do uh, a praise in the parking lot. We want to try to have worship where you pull in. We'll uh, be able to give a, a, a musical a rendition of, of, or two, and then we'll have a word. Uh, as you pull in, we'll have someone to give direction so that cars can be lined up. Uh, you'll have to remain in your car. Amen. But prayerfully, on next Sunday, we're going to try to gather together with praise in the parking lot. Uh, we want to do that around 10 a.m., around 10 a.m., praise in the parking lot here at Calvary. God bless you until then.